we're going to be talking about this Day of Atonement and, and what what is this Day of Atonement and, and what is atonement all about and you know and why do we need atonement you know and, and all this atonement stuff we're going to be talking about. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right, let's jump right in. Okay, atonement. First and foremost, the Day of Atonement speaks to kafar in the Hebrew. It's number 3722, and it means to cover, to make amends or reparation for, to appease, that is to bring peace, to pacify or attempt to pacify by making concessions, to reconcile, to placate, to placate or to forgive. You know, all this is encumbered within kafar, within atonement. This is what atonement is about. The Hebrew word kafar means to cover over, but it's often translated as atonement. The word atonement is an abstract word, and in order for us to understand the true Hebrew meaning of a, of a word, we must look to its concrete meaning. So please consider, um, if an offense has been made, the one that has been offended can act as though the offense is covered or unseen. You know, if, if you're going to kafar, if you're going to be one that kafars, one that covers, you know, um, in one respect, you know, one could have could have been a, been have a, offended you, one could have offended you, and you can cover that sin, you know, by simply, you know, ignoring it, or, you know, not even if you don't ignore it, don't don't um, take vengeance on, on his behalf, um, for, less, for lack of a better term, or, or don't retaliate, or don't exercise the right that you might have, you know, over them. You know, someone, someone's, uh, uh, some kid done broke into your garage, you know, you, you may have the right to call the police and, you know, and, and send them to jail or, or juvie or what have you, you know, but you may choose to Kafar and cover that, you know, uh, and, you know, uh, in return, you know, he made a promise not to do it again. So you see how kafar can be used, you know. Uh, we express this idea through the word forgiveness. You know, kafar and, and forgiveness are very closely related. Atonement is an our action that covers the error, you know, so, um, Let's take a look at the word in the Greek. The Greek word atonement is uh, katology, and it's num number 2642, and it speaks to an exchange or an adjustment, that is restoration to Yah or reconciliation. It's from um, the Greek word um, katalaso, number 2644, meaning to exchange as coins of equivalent value to reconcile those who are at variance. So you, you can see, it, that it carries over even into the Greek word, you know, that you're trying to reconcile, you're trying to, you know, exchange something, you know, um, to, for the sake of keeping peace, for the sake of covering something, you know, all this plays a part into atonement. All this plays a part into kafar, you know, and this is the time, you know, to kafar, if you would. We're gonna take a look at a spiritual example a beautiful spiritual example, um, or not spiritual, but scriptural example of kafar. Let me have my first uh, uh, reader read Genesis 27, 34 through 36. Jump down to 41 and then over to 32, Genesis 32, 3 through 5, please. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, my father. And he said, Thy brother Cain was subtlety, and hath taken away thy blessing. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. 
And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my lord Esau. The servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban, and stayed there until now. And I have oxen, and donkeys, blacks, and men servants, and women servants. And I have sent to tell my lord that I may find grace in thy sight. Okay, so here it is. Um, within this, um, this, this story is a beautiful picture of Kafar. You know, um, here it is. We have the story of Esau and Yaakov. You know, and we all know the story. I, I, I should hope we all know the story by now. But, you know, um, Yaakov supplanted his um, brother Esau. He, you know, he uh, actually, by, by deceiving his, his uh, father Esau into giving him his blessing. You know, um, you remember the story, he dressed up like him and everything and brought in savory meat um, or venison, you know, the fool. And it worked, you know, not, it was at the urging of his mom, you know, that, you know, and that's a part, that's a part that oftentimes get left out, you know, um, you know, to show, you know, uh, Yaakov's heart, you know, so to speak, you know, he didn't want to do it, his mom insisted, you know, he was following orders, you know, um, not to say that it was right in and of itself, it wasn't, you know, but, you know, just to give you some background to the story. Well, anyway, you know, what happened was Esau got tricked out of his blessing and he was highly upset about it, okay? And so here, it, here, here we see in verse 41, he's saying Esau hated Yaakov because of the blessing where his father blessed him. And then even um, said that he will slay his brother Yaakov. So he was pretty upset, right? You know, uh, that's what you call one of them sibling rivalries. Uh, I mean, you know, you know. So uh, here it is. We fast forward to the time when when Yaakov was actually on his way back, you know, to the land in which they were living. You know, he had been over it um, at Laban's for the last twenty years. You know, he had served seven years for um, for Rachel. Got got deceived himself into, into getting Leah, and then served another seven years for Rachel, and then served another six years so that he wouldn't have to return broke. You know, and so here it is, 20 years later, you know, he's coming back, you know, and he's, you know, he has Esau on his mind because he, Esau, you know, said he was going to kill him. You know, and so here it is, he's on his way back, and so it says, Yaakov sent messengers before him to Esau's brother unto the land. You know, that he might find grace in his sight. You know, he's trying to see, you know, where is this guy at? You know, do I got to, you know, do I have, is this something I have to worry about? Okay. You know, and he's like, okay, uh, let me send to him, send a message to him, let him know I'm on my way back, see if I can find grace in his sight. Hmm. You know, it goes on in, in 32, 6 through 8, it says, And the messengers returned to Yaakov, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he come up to meet thee. And 400 men with him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> then Yaakov was greatly afraid and distressed. He divided the people that was with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels and the two bands. And he said, if Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. So he already, he already um, putting his plan together. <laughs> you know, see, and he taking action. You know, but what he should have been doing was praying. <laughs> but anyway, the story continues. You know, in verses... 13 through 16, it says, And he lodged there the same night and took of that which came to his hand a present for Esau's brother. See, now he's thinking. He don't put his thinking cap on, you know. And he's saying, oh, I got to find a way to confide. You know, I got to find a way to make up for my wrong. You know, see, and, and, and so it says, He took of that which came to his hand a present for Esau's brother, 200 she-goats, 20 he-goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 milk camels with their coats, 40 um, kind and 10 bulls and 20 she behinds and 10 bulls. And he delivered them into the hand of his servants, every drove by themselves and said unto his servants, pass over before me and put a space betwixt drove and drove. He had a plan, you know. It goes on in verses 17 to 20. It says, and he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau, my brother, meeteth thee, and asketh thee, saying, Whose art thou, and whither goest thou, and whose art, art these before thee? Then thou shalt say, 
thy be thy servant Yaakov's. It's a present sent unto my Adonai, or to my Lord Esau. And I just kind of like save Adonai for Yah. But, you know, and, and take note that he's, he's calling him his Lord, you know, saying, you know, hey, you know, uh, I know I was wrong. I'm, I'm submitting to you, you know, and, you know, hey, I'm sending this present, you know, forgive me, brother. Brother, we still brothers, right? Uh, <laughs> and behold, also he is behind us. Um, verse 19, and so commanded he the second and the third and all that followed the drove, saying, On this manner shall ye speak unto Esau when ye find him. And say ye moreover, Behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us, for he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me. And afterward I will see his face, peradventure he will accept of me. Now I want you to know that these three words, I will appease, is actually kafar. You know, see, he's trying to atone for his wrongs. You know, Kafar, again, means to cover, to make amends. And this is what he's trying to do. He's trying to cover his wrong. He's trying to make amends. He's, um, uh, he's trying to appease, that is, to bring peace, to pacify his brother, or attempt at least to pacify by making concessions. See, and a lot of times, you know, when we're trying to Kafar, we don't go this far to Kafar. You know, we say, I'm sorry, and you know, if that don't do it, oh well, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, y'all can be honest, it's okay, you know, but this is how you confer, you know, Yaakov is teaching us how to confer. Yeah. He says, um, you know, in his heart, I will confer him with the present. You know, now this wasn't no little itty bitty old present, you see that, right? <laughs> you know, so, you know, it really speaks to his heart he really wanted to confide. He, he really wanted to appease his brother. You, you can see that. It comes, it comes forth in his, not only in his words, but also in his gift. Amen? Yeah, amen. You know, and this is real important for those of us who are trying to reconcile or restore relationships in our lives. We can learn a lesson from that. Verse 21 says, so when the, when the present so went the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. Now, let's speak about how he's doing this. You know, he sent the present before he came into his presence. Uh-huh, you see that? He softened him up before he even got there. You know, not only did he send one present, he sent several presents. You know, he's going to be good and soft by the time I get to him. You know, and I guess you got to, you know, determine that on, you know, how big of a... Um, uh, uh, a mistake or, or wrong you, you have done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, but he's seen this as, as being fit. And so, you know, he sent all this beforehand, before he ever seen him. You know, he ain't even never seen him or hear his voice. He, he you know, he letting his uh, actions do the talking. Amen? Mm -hmm. you know, we all heard the saying that action speaks louder than words. Well, his action was speaking for him. Mm -hmm. Let me have my next reader read uh, Genesis 33, 1 through 4, and then jump down to 8 through 12. And Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau's hand, and with him 400 men. And he divided the children unto Leah, and unto Rachel, and unto the two handsmaids. And he put the handsmaids and their children foremost, and Leah and their children after, and Rachel and Yosef hindermost. And he passed over before them, and bowed himself to the ground seven times, until he came near to his brother. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And he said, What meanest thou by all the drove which I met? And he said, These are to find grace in thy sight of my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore I have seen thy face, as though I have seen the face of Elohim, and thou hast, and thou was pleased with me. Take, I pray thee, my blessing is that is brought to thee, because Elohim hath dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it. And he said, let us take our journey, and let us go, and I will go before thee. Okay, so so we see here, 
you know, Yaakov getting his kapara on, right? Yeah. You know, and, you know, did you take note when he did sin, he came over and bowed himself to the ground seven times yeah. until he came near to his brother? Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's showing, he's showing, you know, great reverence and respect, yeah. you know, to his brother. You know, um, you know, he's going that extra mile, if you would. Yeah. You know, he's going that extra mile because, you know, he really wanted to reconcile his relationship with his brother. He didn't want to fight and, and have his, him and his brother um, be fighting and killing one another. And we shouldn't want that either. You know, and so he was going that extra mile to Kafar. He was trying to bring peace to the situation. You know, and, you know, here it is. It says Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And they wept. You know, he missed his brother too. And oftentimes that's the way it is, yeah. you know, but we be so caught up into, you know, what we think is going on, you know, and, and people being stubborn, you know, that, we, you know, we can't, we can't recognize that, you know, hey, we still family and, you know, and they got some, they have some love for me somewhere in there, mm -hmm. you know, even though they, you know, they putting up this tough exterior, they still have some love for me in there somewhere, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and so, you know, Yaakov was just, you know, masterful at getting to that love that was in there, you know, you know, and, and, and a lot of times it's predicated upon one really believing you, you know, and he showed that he was really serious and sincere, you know, he didn't, he didn't send, you know, um, a, 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 a $2 card, I don't know if cards $2 anymore, you know, he didn't send a $5 card, you know, um, and, you know, saying I'm sorry and that's it, you know what I'm saying, you know, he went that extra mile because he wanted he wanted it to be heartfelt, and it truly was heartfelt, mm -hmm. you know, so much so that, you know, hey, when Esau seen them, you know, they wept, you know, it was a night, it was a good reunion, you know, um, you know, but now this, this latter half is real important, though, you know, he, he, sa he says, Esau tells him, I have enough, my brother, keep, keep that thou hast unto thyself, and Yaakov said, nay, I pray thee, if I found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. Because if he didn't receive the, the present, then even though, you know, I'm happy to see you right now, but the beef's still on. You know, and, and we're going to revisit yeah. this later. You know, that's what that says in their culture. In their culture, that's how it went. You know, so he, he said, no, 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 no. See, Yaakov wouldn't take no for an answer. He said, take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee. You know, because Elohim have dealt graciously with me and because I have enough. And he urged him, you know, and he, he basically said, you know, yeah, I dealt graciously with me because I had your blessing. You know, <laughs> you know, so it's partly yours anyway. So, you know, take it, you know. And, and so he took it, you know. And so by him taking it, you know, that's supposed to squash that. You know, so, you know, that's, you know, that's, that, but that's just a beautiful picture of Kafar. You know, and and with a with a uh, sibling rivalry, yes. you know, which many of us have experienced at one point or another. I mean, yes. you know, so you know, this is the time for that sort of thing. So, uh, what else can we do? You know, besides um, besides that, you know, uh, when we want to confer, you know. Um, one of the things that we know is that Yahshua came to cover our sins. I mean, yes. he came to cover our sins. So do we still need to cover mm -hmm. since our sins are, have been covered? Mm -hmm. We absolutely yes. still need to cover. Yes. You know, hence we see in, in 1 Yochanan 3, 4 through 11. Let, let my next reader read 1 Yochanan 3, 4 through 11. Whosoever committed sin, Transgression also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. Hold on, I gotta pause you right there for a minute. Sin is what? Transgression. This is the very definition of sin. Sin is what? Transgression of the law. All right. Now, you know what I want us to do is everywhere where it says sin in this passage, you know we gotta think transgression of the law. Okay. Um, you ready to think transgression of the law, sis? Well, don't just think to say it. All right. <laughs> and you know that he was manifested to take away our transgression of the law, and in him there is no transgression of the law. Whosoever abideth in him transgresseth the law not. Whosoever transgresseth the law not hath not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteousness 
even as he is righteousness. He that committeth transgression of the law is sin of the devil, or is of the devil. For the devil transgressed the law from the beginning. For this per purpose, the son of Elohim was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of Elohim doth not commit transgression of the law, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot transgress the law, because he is born of Elohim. In this, the children of Elohim are manifest, and the children of the de and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of Elohim, neither is he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Hallelujah. You know, and see, and I, I want everyone to understand understand this and to really grasp this, because, you know, there's there's some, some doctrines that's, that's even out there who will go so far as to say, you know, um, because we're born of Elohim, we cannot sin no matter what we do. Mm. You know, and this is this just flies, in, and they're taking the passage out of context because it flies in the face of the passage, mm -hmm. you know, for, you know, this is the whole reason that he put verse 7 in here, little children. You know, because you got to be a little child, spiritually speaking, if you believe in like that. You know, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. You can't become righteous by not doing righteous. You know, and if you can, you can't remain righteous by not doing righteous. He that committeth transgression of the law is of the devil. For the devil sent him from the beginning. Whosoever is born of Elohim doeth not transgress the law. He cannot transgress the law because he's born of Elohim. In other words, because he's born of Elohim, it's not in him to transgress the law. You know, I've even had to drive miles back to Home Depot to take one dollar back because they overpaid me. Because I couldn't transgress the law. You know, now that doesn't mean I couldn't take that dollar. I could have, but I would have been transgressing. You know, but it just wasn't in me to do that. You know, I'm, I'm, I remember one time I'm sitting in, in Home Depot arguing with the manager because I'm trying to give him, you know, uh, uh, the machine gave me a hundred dollar bill. You know, um, I put in a twenty, and for change, it gave me a hundred. I mean, that was a good deal and all, you know, but <laughs> but I knew it wasn't right. So I go to the uh, manager, and you know, you, you know, sometimes you talk to people and they not hearing you, you know. They, they just, they, 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 they see your mouth moving, but they not hearing you. You know, they already have it made up in their mind, you know, what, you know, where you coming from. You know, and so this manager had up and had in his mind, you know, he knew where I was coming from. He thought I was trying to get some money back saying that, you know, hey, you know, I gave a hundred and it only gave me a 20 when I'm telling them. In fact, I'm telling them just the opposite. Hey, I put in a 20 and I pulled this got a few dollars in change and it gave me a hundred and something dollars back. You know, and when he finally shut up and listened and seen what what um what I was saying, then his mouth um dropped. Mm -hmm. Then he was, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, um, yes, I can. You know, I can take that back. Yeah, I'm sure you can. <laughs> but just a minute ago, you weren't gonna give me nothing back. You know, had had it been the other way around. You know, but it's not about how the other people act or react to to our acts of um, righteousness. You know, we're to act righteous in spite of the other people. You know, a lot of times you're going to be acting righteously and, you know, and it's not going to be a favorable return on that righteousness. But that's okay. You know, because Yah sees. Amen? Amen. And that's what it's about. You know, so don't let nobody ever tell you, you know, that, you know, hey, you can't sin because you have Yahshua. That's ridiculous. You know, and that's, that's exactly, you know, what... Uh, Apostle Yochanan is actually is teaching here. You know, he says, in this, the children of Elohim are manifest in the children of the devil. The children of Elohim act like Elohim. And the children of the devil act like the yeah. devil. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever doeth not righteousness is not of Elohim. Neither he that loveth not his brother. You can't not love your brother and still think that you are of Elohim. Mm. You know, especially, you know, when that brother is in Elohim. Because when you've done it to the least of them, you've done it unto him. 
Amen? Amen. You know, so we should love one another. Amen. You know, and just to back up what I'm saying, Hebrews 9.28 says, So Messiah was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that took for, um, for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. I'm going to repeat that. It says, So Messiah was once offered to bear the sins of men. You think he's coming down to uh, be sacrificed again for some old sins that you decided you wanted to make? Mm -hmm. Not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 21 through 27, And having the high priest over the house of Elohim, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed of pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful, that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. What, what should we be doing with one another? We should be provoking one another unto love and unto good works. Yeah. Tell a person what's right, even if they don't want to hear it. Yeah. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Can you see that? For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. The Messiah is not going to come down and be sacrificed for you again. So what can you look forward, forward to? Verse 27 tells you, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversary. You can trust and believe that, you know, if you do wrong, that there's going to be a price to pay. Yes. You know, Amen. judgment is coming your way. Yes. Now, it's a good thing that we have a merciful L. You know, but don't get it twisted. You're going to get what's coming. Right. And if that wasn't enough, you know, Yahshua taught on the uh, very subject himself. Let me have my next reader read Luke 12, 42 through 48, please. And the Adonai said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Adonai shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Adonai, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath, but, and, but, and, if, that servant says, servant say in his heart, my Adonai delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken. The Adonai of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at, that, at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in sunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Adonai's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that know not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Okay, did y'all catch that? Yeah. I pray y'all caught that. Now, first of all, the subject is servants, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's talking about the Adonai, you know, that has went away when he's come back, and it's talking about those who are serving him. So it's talking about the servants of the Adonai. We know the Adonai is Yahushua, and yeah. the servants speak to us. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Now, he tells us in verse 47, he says, And that servant, which knew his Adonai's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. So can you see that there's judgment coming, you know, even for the believers? You know, you're going to be beaten with stripes. You know, you're going to have to pay for everything that you've done. You get to have your slate wiped clean once. You know, he died for your sins once. And you get to have your sins Wipe clean once. But after that, 
the, t the tally begins to accrue. Hmm. You know, and if you're not preparing yourself like you're supposed to and you're not doing his will, you're not doing according to his will, if you make it in, you'll be beaten with many stripes, seeing that you knew better. Can you see that? Yeah. Now, they say ignorance is bliss, you know, but not with y'all. Ignorance is no excuse. Now, it may save you a few stripes, you know, but it's not going to get you out of the stripes. You still gonna have some stripes coming, whether you are ignorant to his will or not. Can you see that? Because it says that, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. So you're still getting some stripes whether you, were, whether you were ignorant to the fact or not. You're not getting out of it. You know, if you deserve those stripes, you're going to get them. You know, so that's, that's real important because a lot of people have this uh, doctrine that, you know, hey, because I accepted the Messiah as my Adonai and Savior, you know, I can't, you know, I'm good. I'm good, you know, I'm not, you know, I, there's no stripes coming my way. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I got it made in the shade. No, that's not where the story ends. That's where it begins. That's where it starts. You know, so what are we to do once we've accepted Yahushua and had our sins cleared and again found ourselves, find ourselves dirty and filthy with sin? What do we do then? Well, for starters, we pray. This is where prayer comes in. Maybe some of you have found yourself in that situation or circumstance now today. You know, we pray. This is where prayer comes in at. The sacrifice of prayer. And just how should we go about praying, you might ask. Well, I'm glad you asked. You know, y'all sure are going to answer it for us. Let me have my next reader read Matthew Yahoo 6, verses 7 through 18, please. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Okay. Hallelujah. So we see here, you know, that we're we're taught to pray for Yah to forgive our forgive us our debts. But it doesn't stop there. As we forgive our debtors. You know, and, and the Messiah goes on to elaborate on this in verses 14 and 15. He says, For if ye for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither Will your father forgive your trespasses? See, and this is crucial to understand, see, because some people are is harboring, you know, some hatred and bitterness in their hearts, you know, because of some, some wrongs that, that, that have been perpetrated against them. And yes, you know, it may have may have been something tragic, it may have been something, you know, horrendous, even. See, but you have to forgive them not for their sake, but for yours. See, you have to understand how this thing works. You know, if you don't forgive, then you can't be forgiven. You know, so you really have to have to get this thing. You know, yes, you know, we've accepted the Messiah, 
Our sins were forgiven. We got a clean slate. We, we, we started walking. We slipped. You know, we backslid. You know, we slid to the side and all that. You know, now, you know, what do we do? We pray. We pray that y'all forgive us where we messed up at. As we forgive our debtors. Now, along that way, you can say, well, you know, it was so-and-so fault that I slipped in the, in the first place. Mm -hmm. If they hadn't done this, that, or the other, I wouldn't even have never slipped. Mm -hmm. That all may be well and good, may even be true or not. You know, it doesn't matter. You got to forgive them. Mm -hmm. Well, if this wouldn't have happened to me, then I wouldn't have had these inhibitions and I wouldn't have wound up in this place. Yeah, but you still got to forgive them. Yeah, but you don't know what it was like. No, I don't. But I do know you got to forgive them. How can I forgive somebody who done done this to me? Yeah. I don't know, but I know it needs to be done. Yeah. You know, you can pray on how to do it, too. Right. You know, there's no prayers that's off limits. Yeah. So, you know, this is something that's necessary. It's something that's, that's critical. It's, it's essential to your faith. You know, so this is, this is one of the ways to get some of that stuff, stuff off your um, slate. It's by forgiving some of the people who trespassed against you. No matter how terrible the thing is, might have been that they've done. You know, so that's real important to understand. Because, you know, even though we've accepted the Messiah and we uh, put on our gospel armor and we done, ha we have our feet shod with the gospel of peace and we're trying to walk peaceably throughout this journey. You know, we're walking in the desert. You know, and the desert is filled with dirt. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's no way, you know, we don't have Nikes. You know, we have sandals. And there's no way you're going to be walking in all this dirt and your feet not going to get dirty. Right. You're going to trespass against someone. Yeah. Trust and believe you're going to trespass against someone. And guess what? Someone is going to trespass against you. Yeah. See, but what do you do? When they trespass against you, do you hold it against them? See, because you do have that power. You have the power to hold it against them. You know, but just like you don't forgive them, there's something you're not going to be forgiven for. Yes. You know, you know, and, see, and, and a lot of times, you know, people get this thing twisted. They get their feet dirty and because they, they don't trespass against their brother or their sister. And then guess what they do? They go and they get on their knees. And they pray to Yah for forgiveness. And that's all well and good because you violated him as well because when you've done it to the least of them, you've done it unto him. You know, but you still have to deal with the proponent of the trespass. You know, I oftentimes give an example, you know, if someone came and stole my car, you know, and then, you know, they had a repentful heart later and they, you know, and they prayed to Yah that, you know, uh, um, that, that he forgives them for stealing my car, you know, but, you know, and he, he, he say, yeah, okay, but, you know, I still don't have my car. You know, uh, that's not going to work. You know, you have, to, you have to do better than that. You know, you got to deal with the person that you, uh, that you wronged. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, you know, y'all may forgive you, you know, but you still got to deal with me. <laughs> you know, and, and, and M... I'm walking righteously, you know, then I'll wash your feet. If I'm walking righteously, then that trespass that you did against me that caused your feet to become dirty, I'll pick up my brother or my sister's feet and I'll wash it by forgiving them. See, and then their walk is made clean once again. See, that's how our walk become dirty. That's how our feet become dirty is by trespassing against others. You know, and others, you know, won't clean that dirt up. Or vice versa. We won't clean the dirt off of those who trespass against us, but yet we want to be the hypocrite and go and ask y'all to forgive us. He's not going to do it. He already told us he's not going to do it. If you don't forgive, you can't be forgiven. He already told us. So we have to learn the wise, you know, one another's feet. Yeah, and I know some people's feet stink. 
You know, but that's why they need to be wise. Amen. You know, hey. You know, it, it, you know, it happens. But it's real important that we understand that concept. You know, and this is a, yet another way that we get some of that stuff off our slate. You know, another way is by covering one another. Don't worry, I got you covered. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to cover you with prayer. You know, and I encourage each and every one of you to cover us with prayer. You know, cover one another. Cover us with prayer. You know, that's, that's, that's a wonderful thing, you know, that, that we need to do. You know, and that'll help, you know, get some of the stuff off our slate as well. You know, so just like I got you covered, I pray y'all have me covered too. Another thing that we can do is found in First Keepers 4, 7, and 8. It says, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity. Um, and this word charity is actually agape. Among yourselves for charity or agape shall cover the multitude of sins. So this is another way you can get some of that stuff off your slate. It is by having love one for another. Having that true love, that agape love, you know, not that eros or that phileo, you know, but that true agape love, you know. And, and even another way is found in Yaakov or, or James chapter 5, 19 and 20. It says, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and won't convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner or he that converteth the one that transgresses against the law, amen, from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. So there's another way you can get some of that stuff off your slate. See, Yah is a just ale. He didn't just leave us out there. and You know, he, 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 he put some ways out there so that we can, you know, get in. He wants us to get in. And lastly and most importantly, we can afflict our souls for righteousness sake. You know, just as, you know, we seen with the, with the um, beautiful example of Kafar that, that um, our father Yaakov did, you know, in dealing with his brother Esau. You know, we can do, do likewise, even with our heavenly father. You know, we can just, you know, afflict our souls to show him, you know, because, you know, he don't need nothing we have, I mean. You know, um, but we can afflict our souls to show him, you know, that, hey, yeah, look, I'm yours. I'm, I'm, I'm yours, you know. Um, you know, I'm going to I'm going to try to appease you, you know, by afflicting my soul, you know, to please you. You know, so, you know, I don't mind, you know, afflicting my soul to appease you that I might please you. You know, and, and see, and that's that's uh, that's that's what we want to do. You know, and that's what this day is all about. You know, this is why we're fasting. It's a show that we're afflicting our souls, you know, that we might be accepted by Yah. We're offering a sacrifice that we might be accepted by the Most High, that our sins might be covered. You know, not the ones Yahshua came and took away, but the ones, you know, that after we accepted them, you know, we done trespassed here and there. You know, this is why the Messiah told us, you know, hey, you know, like I washed y'all feet, y'all gonna have to wash one another's feet. Mm -hmm. It's a part of it. It's a part of the walk. You know, so, yes, Yahoo 58 really speaks to how this afflicting of the soul looks. You know, and sometimes it's, it's, it's about, it's not just about fasting. Sometimes it's about, you know, saying the right thing at the right time. Even though you know it's gonna afflict your soul, mm -hmm. even though you know it's gonna it's gonna have that bounce back, you know it's gonna be have that boomerang effect. It's gonna come back and bite you, you know. Sometimes saying what's right and doing what's right had that effect. I mean, anybody who's been walking this way for a minute, you know, y'all know that. Hey, sometimes you do right and it comes back to, to bite you, you know. But Yah, He's watching over us, 
you know, he's watching over his, and, and even if he let it bite you, he's going to mend you back together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's nothing to worry about. But it's something that we have to go through. It's a part of our testing, our trials. It's a part of our walk in this wilderness, which is to prove us. I mean, yeah. you know, so in first, uh, in first uh, verse of Yeshayahu 58, it says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression and the house of Yaakov their sins. Now, let me tell you, when you begin to do that, your souls will get afflicted. You know, it will have that boomerang effect. You know, they going, boy, they don't, they going to tell you about yourself. You, you, you holier than thou, you, you know, they going, they going to let you know. Verse two, yet they seek me daily. And delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness. And forsook not the ordinance of their Elohim. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching the Elohim. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. See, this is not the type of fast that y'all want. You know, when you're afflicting your soul for him, you don't do his your pleasure, you do his pleasure. Yeah. You don't do your labors, you do his labors. Yeah. Verse 4, behold, ye fast for strife and debate and the smite with the fist of wickedness. Mm. You fast because you want to get back at your enemies. You fast because you want to show the Joneses, you know, who's really in the lead. That's not what Yah is, is about. Ye, fat, ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. This is the reason you really should be fasting so that, you know, you can get a prayer through. Is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? This is what Yah wants. He wants us to truly afflict our soul. Is it too... Bow down his head as a bulrush and the spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Would thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to Yahuwah? He don't care nothing about that. He can care less about that, you, that show you put on. He's the one that tries the reins of the hearts. <laughs> you might be able to fool some of us, but you can't fool him. He's looking at what's going on in the inside. He know you better than you know yourself. Yeah. 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 Verses 6 through 11. Is it not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? Yeah. Try not doing some of that wicked stuff you've been doing. Yeah. To undo the heavy burdens. Yeah. You know, start not oppress, the, the, not oppress those who are up under you. And to let the oppressed go free. Yeah. That ye break every yoke. Yeah. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out into thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. And that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. And thine health shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of Yahuwah shall be thy reward. Re-reward. Then shalt thou call, and Yahuwah shall answer. Hallelujah. Anybody want to know the recipe to get a prayer through? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. This is the recipe to get a prayer through. Some of us need to get a prayer through. Some of our prayers aren't getting through. Yeah. And thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of Yahuwah shall be thy reward. Mm. Then shalt thou call, and Yahuwah shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Hallelujah. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. Stop trying to blame everybody else. Don't you know when you're pointing at somebody else, you got four other fingers pointing back at you? Come on now. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light arise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. And Yahuwah shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. And make that thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And they that be of thee shall build the old waste places. Now, they, he, he, I think he's talking to some folks in this room now. I think he's talking to some people such as us. You know, and they shall be of thee, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. We have any repairs of the breach in here? We have anybody trying to be the restorer of paths to dwell in? Anybody trying to return to the ancient way? Verse 13, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my Kodesh day, on my holy day, and call the Sabbath for delight, the holy of Yahuwah honorable, and shall honor him not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, yeah. then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahuwah. Yeah. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Yaakov thy father, for the mouth of Yahuwah hath spoken. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what this thing looks like. That's what the Day of Atonement is about. Yeah. All that being said, you know, here's a bowl, here's a pitcher, and here's a cloth. I encourage you, you know, to go take this time, take the next 15, 20 minutes, and wash someone's feet. You know, if there's and I, I mean that spiritually. You know, <laughs> if, there's any, if there's any relationships, you know, that needs to be mended, if there's any one that you need to ask forgiveness, or if there's any one that you need to forgive, take this opportunity now to give them a call. Maybe it's the same person you called last year. One of these years, they may, they may give in. You know, look at the example of Yahweh. You know, look at his example. Try to, you know, take something, some notes from him. You know, the thing is, is that we give, we do our all to wash their feet. You know, and that, and some people like their feet dirty. And that's okay. But get the ball out your court. Hallelujah. You know, do what you're supposed to do. Don't worry about how it's going to be received. You know, because our L can touch their heart too. And vice versa, if there's, you know, if there's something that someone has done to you and you're just holding on to it, you're holding a seed of bitterness, let it go. Call them and let them know that you forgive them. Yeah. You know, if you haven't spoken to them and, 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 and they know that they were wrong and they didn't have, they wasn't man or woman enough to apologize, yeah. let it go anyway. Not for they say, for your say. Hallelujah. Confirm. Cover them. Reconcile with them. Repent. Renew. That's what it's about. Because when you've done it to the least of them, you've done it unto him. You know, maybe just by doing this action, you know, you may cause them to come to God. Maybe they'll see the change in you. Maybe they'll see your light. Maybe it'll pierce through their darkness. You know, so I encourage you to, you know, take this time to do that. And then uh, we'll come back after about 15, 20 minutes and get our praise on. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's all I have for you. Pray with the blessing yeah. to you.